Good morning, friends. Today's scripture reading is from the New Testament, the epistle 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of God. For the people of God, thanks be to God. Amen. The Apostle Paul was writing this letter to the Church of Corinth, a city where education was a source of power and status. A simple gospel of love and grace based on Christ's death on the cross just didn't add up for those who thought they already knew everything. Sages and rhetoricians were given positions of leadership in the church, and they were preaching fancy, eloquent sermons that sounded wise, but overlooked the core of the gospel. There was division in the church because people weren't sure which apostle they should follow or whose wisdom was the true wisdom. Paul was teaching those that there was only one true wisdom the wisdom of God. Christ was the word, the wisdom, and the power of God. And the cross was the core of his gospel. The message of the cross seemed like foolishness to those who were perishing, but to those who were being saved, it was the power of God. The word of the cross was glad news that in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, 2 Corinthians 5.19. But in the eyes of the world, the cross was a symbol of weakness and futility. Paul said, has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? The world had been unable to understand the word of God. God's covenant, God's commandments, and God's promises, God's chosen people. They had turned away from him again and again, and God had made a plan to save those who would listen and believe and trust him. The Jews demanded signs. In today's gospel reading where Jesus cleansed the temple by overturning the tables of the money changers, the Jews asked, what sign will you show for doing this? In other words, they were asking for proof that Jesus had the authority to drive people and animals out of the temple and rant about the desecration of his father's house. They wanted a sign. They wanted evidence that he had some kind of power that would make them think him worth listening to. They wanted to see or hear something that made sense to them. Instead, Jesus gave them a strange answer. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. It had taken them 46 years to build that temple, and his words were foolishness to them. But of course, Jesus was speaking of the temple of his own body. After Jesus was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered what he had said and believed the scripture and the word he had spoken. Paul said the Greeks desired wisdom. They turned to philosophy in an attempt to get in touch with the reality of God. 
They wanted clear-cut definitions, and the message of the cross did not satisfy their intellectual cravings. King David had written the beautiful prayer we read today about God's revelation of himself through nature and through the law. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Despite the evidences of God in the beauty and order of creation, and despite the truth that David had celebrated in the law, philosophy had nothing to offer, and many of the Greeks were looking in the wrong place for their answers. So, because the world had not been able to know God through worldly wisdom, God decided to save those who would believe. Paul was proclaiming Christ crucified as God's answer, as God's wisdom. Although that message was a stumbling block to those who saw it as foolish, to those who believed and answered the call, Christ became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Paul went on to write in the next chapter of his letter, 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5, When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The life of Jesus was given for us on the cross, because God was not willing for false wisdom and false power to have the final say. The life that died on the cross is the source of our life. In order for the wisdom of God to take hold in us, we need to let go of the wisdoms that are false and destructive and distracting so we can hold on to the one who holds all things. The wisdom of God is made known to us when we spend time with God, when we wait and listen and seek to draw near to him. That wisdom is the voice that God calls us and moves us and moves with us. That wisdom is the message of the cross. That is the message that I have been called to preach repeatedly. It is the message that we all need to hear and I hear it again about the God who loves us so much. He sent his only son to die on the cross in our place and to buy the pardon for our sins so that we might receive his promised eternal life. It is the message of Christ crucified, to be sure, but it is also the message of him resurrected, victorious over sin and death. Martin Luther said, learn to know Christ and him crucified. Sing to him. And say to him, Lord Jesus, you are my righteousness. I am your sin. You've taken upon yourself what is mine and given to me what is yours. You have become what you were not, so that I might become what I was not. Today and every day we are together, I want you to feel welcomed and invited to know to love, and to trust in the one who died to set us free from sin and give us new life in him.
the one true wisdom, grace, power, and glory, our Savior and our Redeemer. Hallelujah and Amen.